art so effortlessly connects you to all the human disciplines. And I could be involved in sociology and psychology, uh, physics, uh, uh, the whole world opened up to me. My name is Jeff Coons. Uh, I'm an artist. I was born in 1955 in York, Pennsylvania, in the United States. Uh, my parents uh, were always very supportive to me as a young child. My father was an interior decorator. He had a business called Henry J. Coons Interiors. And I really learned aesthetics from my dad. Uh, I would visit his showroom where he had a furniture store. And I would see how one day if I would uh, visit, uh, there could be a, a black leather couch and maybe red carpet, kind of a modernist type of uh, installation. And I could come back two weeks later and it would be French provincial. And things would be in turquoise and there'd be some gold and some wooden uh, pieces. So I really learned that uh, colors and textures can change the way you feel. And so I learned the basics of aesthetics from my dad. My mother, uh, her side of the family, uh, my grandfather was the city treasurer in York, Pennsylvania. So I picked up a little bit on uh, a political side of life, uh, a joy of interacting with people, uh, being part of a community. Uh, my grandfather and his brothers and sisters, they were all merchants. So they had businesses that they were always interacting with people. When I was younger, uh, maybe about three, four years of age, is when I first showed signs that I enjoyed art. There was a little shed outside of my kindergarten in, uh, in York. And after school, I would go to this shed. And on the weekends, I would go to this shed. And I would make things out of uh, popsicle sticks or make drawings. And uh, that was the first memory that I had of enjoying art. And I remember my parents kind of coming up and seeing that I made a drawing. And uh, they said, you know, that's really good. And it gave me a sense of self. And I have an older sister. I have one sibling, my sister Karen. She's three years older. And so she, because of her age, could do everything better than I could. She could pronounce words better, jump higher. Uh, and finally, I had something that I could do within the family that gave me a sense of self. At a certain point, my father uh, recommends that, you know, he would like to show my paintings in his showroom window. So my father was really kind of my first dealer that I worked with as far as setting up a situation to display my work and have it sold. And so he would put my paintings in his showroom window and he sold a couple of my paintings. And my father would also get commissions for my work. And I remember uh, starting to have an interest in art history. Uh, my aunt, uh, who lived in Philadelphia, actually would take me to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. But my father also got commissions for me to paint some old master paintings, and, or at least uh, from like the uh, 18th century. So uh, Pater, a painting of dancers that's in the uh, National Gallery in Washington. I remember making a copy of that for one of his clients. And uh, so my dad really was the first dealer that I had. My parents uh, recommend that if I want to take lessons, I could take art lessons on the weekend. I start doing that. And so I end up even going through, you know, uh, lower school and high school that I'm always in the art class. And I'm really not prepared to do anything other than to go to art school when it comes time to go uh, to college. And it wasn't until my first day of art school that I had an art history lesson 
where I had a teacher really, you know, uh, speak about uh, art and place it within the context of what it could be. And he brought up an image of a Manet painting and started to speak about the painting, how in 19th century uh, France, how in the painting Olympia, how you could interpret some of the images, the woman lying on the couch, what her profession may be, the black cat in the corner, what that could al uh, allude to, uh, and uh, the, the woman uh, presenting uh, the, the woman on the couch with the flowers, uh, what that could reference, that she could be a courtesan, and all of this uh, different information was really revealing to me how art so effortlessly connects you to all the human disciplines. And I could be involved in sociology and psychology, uh, physics, uh, uh, the whole world opened up to me. You know, I think what the art world represented to me was a way of being part of a, a group of people. I, I think growing up I felt somewhat isolated. I was in York, Pennsylvania. I was interested in the arts. I started to develop, you know, a philosophical interest in the world around me. And I, I think that the art world represented to me uh, a way of being part of a larger group of people that were curious about transcending, about becoming. And, uh, and, and that, that information, not only could you transcend and become a different pers person, a vaster person, but that you could also share that with other people. I think that's what attracted me to the art world, the idea of the avant-garde. And so uh, Dali represented that to me, uh, you know, uh, Duchamp, Picabia. And I was fortunate that I was able to meet Dali. My uh, mother informed me that he stayed at the St. Regis Hotel, spent half the year there when he wasn't in Spain or uh, in Paris. And so I called up the hotel one time and he answered the phone. And in a, kind of a broken English, speaking both Spanish and English, a little French. Uh, but I was able to communicate with him. I only spoke uh, English, but uh, that I was a fan and that I would appreciate if I could meet him. And he told me that if I came to New York that weekend, he would meet me on a Saturday afternoon. I, I went to the St. Regis Hotel. He said at noon he would come downstairs into the lobby. Exactly at noon the doors of the elevator opened and uh, there he was. Um, he invited me if I wanted to, to go to the Nodler Gallery in New York, that he had an exhibition of his work there, and also a surrealist show that he curated. And I told him that I would meet him there. So. Uh, when I arrived, he was walking around with this very tall uh, French woman. He had on a, a kind of a buffalo fur coat on, she had on a fur, and they walked around together. And it wasn't until later that I realized that uh, that was a mandalier. And so this was his muse that uh, was so important to Dolly at this time in his uh, life. This was in the, uh, the 70s, in 1974. And uh, so he walked around with Amanda for a while, and then he came over and he spoke to me, and we were in front of the painting of the uh, Royal Tiger. And at so many feet back, it's like the head of uh, three heads of Lenin. It's a fantastic uh, uh, a painting. And he asked if I wanted to photograph him. I told him, sure. And uh, he, he posed, he put his mustache up, and he would tell me to hurry up. I was juggling my camera around, getting my f-stop correct and everything, that he couldn't hold this pose all day. But he was extremely uh, generous. And I really left New York that uh, evening feeling that, you know, I could do this. I could be uh, part of this kind of idea of the avant-garde and to make art uh, a way of life.